In this episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to take an unfinished wooden rooster that I found at the thrift store and turn it into something that looks like a weather vane sign. And next, I'm going to teach you how to transfer any image to fabric. This is such an incredibly easy way to do it, and I'm going to teach you how. And lastly, we'll take this hot podge of parts and turn it into something you could be proud to display. So if you're ready for this week's episode of Flea Market Rescue, then let's dive into it. Just a quick note before we get started though, if you're new to my channel, I just want to welcome you. My name's Kelly Sherry. My mom and I do a lot of vintage markets. I show you how to take thrifted items and turn it into beautiful home decor. I post a new video every week, so if you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell, you'll get notified every time I post a new video. All right, so when I was out, I came across this wood rooster. Um, it obviously at one time had like a dollar rod in there, but does not anymore. This was $1.99 at Goodwill. So I've been searching, hoping to find some kind of little, you know, block of wood with a, you know, maybe a spindle. Today I came across this here. This was $2.99 and it's like the perfect spindle and it has a base. So what we're going to do first, I'm going to cut the wire off because this is kind of wobbly. It's not really standing well. And then I'm going to take the top part wire off too. So I'm just going to unscrew these here just to get the sign off. So as I'm taking apart this thing, I'm starting to feel bad because I'm thinking, what if this is made by local artists? So I'm thinking this is made by a local artist, you know, and then you turn it around and look it. It's made in China. Okay, so we took the sign off and now we're gonna, we're gonna cut these, this wire off, try to get this off. It looks like it's stapled in there, so I'll have to get my wire snip. Okay, so obviously my wire snips from right here on the rooster. Anyway, we are just gonna cut this with the wire snips. Try to, no, I'm gonna have to pry this. I really got this staple down. I might have to get some pliers to just kind of Get this up. Oh, I got it. Okay. And then I'm just gonna cut the wires off of here because again, it's just, it's not very sturdy. So we'll start with one wire and maybe it'll all just unravel. We're gonna have to cut a few spots here. Alright, so I got everything off of here, however, I just feel like this is just too tall. So I think we're going to cut this down, I think it would look just perfect if we did like right here. So just, you have to judge your height. If it looks too high, you want to, you know, lower it. So that's what we're going to do. We'll cut that on the saw. So now that we have that cut, we're going to use our drill to drill a hole into it so that a dowel rod can sit in there and then a dowel rod will sit on the other half of the rooster and that will join both pieces together. So just go slow in the beginning till you get it started. Alright, so now that we drilled a hole in here, we have a dowel rod that we're going to insert in here. I have to cut it down, but there's already a hole right here, so we're going to insert the dowel rod in here, 
and then we'll place this on top and glue it together. But again, I have to cut down the dowel rod. All right, so I cut my dowel rod. We're just gonna put this part of the dowel rod into the rooster and this part into the spindle and then we just have to glue it together. I think that looks really cool. But again, we need to glue this all together. Before we glue it though, we are gonna paint so it. So we're gonna paint this, but we're gonna paint this with the DIY paint and little black dress. Now I like this green like this. I'm gonna keep that. Our um, rooster is completely dry, but I need to change this base because it just, it all doesn't flow well. So I'm gonna also paint that black. So we just wanna be careful because I wanna keep that green. So I'm gonna carefully paint around this. There we go. Okay, now that this is all dry, we're just gonna sand around the edges. See how we're getting some really nice wood shining through there? So we're just gonna continue to sand this on both sides. And then we'll also sand this base. All right, now that we have this sanded, we're gonna use a little of this paint here and I'm gonna stencil on a little saying here. I have this stencil that I got at the thrift store. I actually picked up like a whole pack of them. So I'm gonna put them in my Etsy store. If you want to buy one, I'm gonna put it for $2. So we are gonna, I want it to say Ben's Grain. All right. And don't worry if we get a little there because we could just always touch it up with a little paint. So Ben's grain, or should I do Ben's seeds? Uh, no, I guess, hmm, I guess I'll do Ben's grain. Or should I do Ben's seeds? No, you know what, We're gonna let's do Ben's seeds. That might look cuter. Okay, I think that looks really cute. We do have a couple spots that we need to touch up, but it's no big deal. So cute. Maybe we should do like a date too. Like a date maybe like established. How about, I always like using 1914, so we'll do that one. Nine. One. Four. Okay, and then we'll just touch up whatever we need to. With a little of that black paint.
Okay, so now it is time to glue this all together. We are gonna use this Gorilla Glue. It's a two-part epoxy, and once it dries, it is like really on there. You don't need to worry. So with this here, you need to squirt out two equal parts, and then we're gonna mix it with a toothpick. So just mix those two parts together. And now we're gonna put some inside this hole that we drilled. And we're also gonna put some right inside this one as well. Now we're going to join the two pieces together. And then you just want to let that dry overnight and it'll be rock hard. You don't need to worry about it anymore. So we'll just let that dry. If you want to learn how to cut out shapes like this and you want to up your game in crafting, sign up for my scroll saw class. It is catered to the beginner and I teach you everything you need to know and you will be able to make all kinds of projects. Today I'm going to teach you how to transfer any image onto fabric. Alright you guys, do you remember when I went to the flea market in Springfield and I bought this like green or feed sack, something like that. Flower sack. They have the stripe going through. We're gonna make pumpkin sack. Um, anyway, I've done a few projects with this, including the pumpkins and even clothes for the snowman. However, this week I wanna do a really cool pillow and I love that green stripe, I'll tell you. But it's just kinda just too plain to make just a pillow with just this. So we're gonna find an image and we're gonna transfer an image onto here because I think that's gonna be really cool. I Off of Amazon, I picked up this transfer paper and that's what we're gonna use to transfer an image. So let's go ahead and find an image on the internet. You can get a lot of great graphics from the Graphic Fairy. They do have a premium membership, but even if you're not a member, you still can download some of these images. We're looking under the vintage chicken clip art and we're trying to find something. I wanna keep with the whole hen, chicken, rooster theme. And I think we might have come across one here. I'm really loving this, but let's read about this. Um, okay, it was in 1828 from a printer's book. You know what? I love black and white images. I think we're going to use this one. I will leave a link in the description to Graphic Fairy and this image so that you can download this yourself. Now, when you're printing on fabric, you want to reverse your image. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I have a Mac computer, so it might be different for you if you are operating with Windows, but this is how you do it with a Mac. Okay, so open your image by double clicking on it. Go up to the preview bar and hit tools. Go down to flip horizontally. And once you do that, it'll reverse the image and that's what we need to do. You can save it or you can simply print it. Okay, so as you can see, I printed out this image. However, I don't feel like it is big enough for what I wanna do here. I wanted to make this image larger, so I bumped it up to 175 instead of 100% at that small size. We bumped it up a little more, like 75%, so almost double. Now I will tell you that when you do that, you might have a problem with your printer. Like, look at I did that and it cut the head off. So let me show you what I did to prevent that and I was able to get the, the print enlarged at 175. So in order to get this to print at 175, I had to fold the paper so that it was closer to the, the um, hen's tail. And then I flipped that over and you have to put that right in the corner here, right in the corner of your printer. 
like so, if you want for it to not cut off. All right, so we're gonna take our image that we enlarged here and we're gonna put it face down in the printer bed. And then we're gonna take a sheet of our transfer paper here and put that into the printer. Now there's two sides to this paper and if you can see, there's a whole bunch of little dots here. This is actually the backing. We're gonna wanna print on the side that has nothing on it. So to do that, I'm just gonna open my drawer here and I'm gonna put the dots up so that I can actually see the dots and then the, the clear background here is going to be where what's going to be printed. And again, we have our print face down in here. So I'm just going to we're going to hit copy. I'm going to make sure that I don't have this on 175% because no, it's actual size. So that's good. All right, so let's do this. I'm gonna hit black. We'll see what happens. Beautiful, okay, let's go do it. Okay, so we have our image all printed. Um, you wanna cut all around this image here. Okay, so we have that cut out. And we're just going to place our image. Like, we're going to center it and we're going to put it, like, face down. I'm just going to put some fabric over this. I'm going to make sure that it's lined up properly looks good to me and let's go ahead and iron it down we're gonna take this hot iron and we're just gonna press it down It says to put another piece of fabric over this. You don't want to put your iron on top of that transfer. You want to put something in between, like another piece of fabric when you're ironing it. Okay, as you can see, we need to do a little more. This looks like it's down. But again, not right here. So we're just going to take the iron and go over it a little bit more. All right, so I'm just taking my iron and I'm just going to go over it. I know that it said to use a cloth, but it just doesn't seem like it's sticking enough. So I'm just going to go over it and then we'll see. All right, let's try this. Let's see what's going to happen here. I'm going to start peeling this up. this oh this is so cool wow and what a sharp image too Oh, that came out great. I wish I would have probably trimmed that up just a little bit tighter, but man, that looks so good. Oh, I love it. You guys have to try this. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so that you can find this transfer. 
um, paper because it is awesome. I mean, think of all the things you can do with this now. All right, now that we have our image on there, we are gonna cut this fabric out so that we can make our pillow. So I'm just gonna cut straight across here. Cut this off. So now we just have this one piece. Let's um cut these two. Because I need to sew on the sides of these. I want to get rid of this. So we're just gonna sew across. We're gonna sew across here and we won't have to worry about that, those unsightly parts of this bag. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna do right sides touching, which means we're gonna flip these. Okay, right now they're like this, but we're gonna flip them the opposite way so that both of the right sides are touching. The sides you want to show are gonna be inside and the inside of the pillow is on the outside right now, okay? So now we're gonna to start to sew this all around. Now we're gonna leave it opening here so that we can turn this. We gotta make sure, yep. So right on the bottom of our pillow, we're gonna leave a little opening, okay? We're gonna just do a little opening here. All right, so we have our right sides touching and we're gonna start at the bottom here where our opening is gonna be. We're gonna start by sewing all the way around and then we'll meet back over here, leaving an opening at the bottom. So you sew a couple stitches and then you back stitch it a little. Now if you remember, we have that yucky part, so I want to totally avoid that. So I'm going to turn it right now. And that should totally bypass it. And we're gonna stop about right there so we still have a good size opening. Okay, so as you can see, we sewed all the way around. We are gonna cut the excess fabric off. It's just gonna make it easier for turning. And then you always want to clip the corners. It just makes it so much easier for turning and it looks nicer too. So just always clip the corners, almost, always clip the corners like almost up to the stitching, but not, you know, cutting the stitching off. So I'm going to cut this side too. We're going to get the excess fabric off of there. It's just too much, too bulky. and we're gonna clip all the corners. So again, you're gonna wanna clip up to the stitching, but not all the way, you know, cutting it. We're gonna do that again with this corner. Now we're gonna turn our pillow. We've cut all the corners, and now it's time to turn it. So you're just gonna wanna take the fabric and turn it inside out. 
Now with these canvas materials, it's a little tougher. Just gotta just work at it here. And you want to really pop out those little corners there, even if you have to use your scissors to kind of just, there you go. So this is really cute. Now we're gonna stuff it. So we're gonna use some of this polyfill. This is the best to use to stuff a pillow or dolls. It doesn't bunch up, it's just, it's the best. So we're just gonna start by stuffing a little in to our pillow and our opening here until our pillow's nice and full. I'm just pushing that into the corners. Okay, so now that we have this stuffed, we're just gonna take a small needle and we're gonna sew this right here shut. I'm just gonna start by putting the needle in here. I tied a knot at the end of the, at the end of the string here. And we're just gonna keep going back and forth till we have our opening all completely sewn shut. And then at the end here, you're gonna just knot it off. Then I like to separate my strings here, and then I cut one part here off. And that way with the other part of the needle, I go back in one more time this ensures that it's not gonna open up. And then with that tail, then I knot it again. That way you just know that this is not gonna come apart. And then we're just gonna cut our ends. And our pillow is complete. Now I always like to finish my things with a hang tag because I just think it gives it you know, a finished look. I'm just gonna pin this on our pillow. And look how cute that is. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, hop on over there. We'd love to have you. We have talented people over there, and our group has grown to over 2,000 members in just a few weeks. Today, I want to showcase two of our members who did some image transfers on fabric. First off, we have Donalai Sautelli. I hope that I'm saying that correctly. 
Anyway, she made this awesome canvas pouch. She layered it with fabric. She used Avery inkjet iron-ons. I'll leave a link in the description for the Avery iron-on transfers, but I love how she decorated it with the purple flowers and the vintage paper items. It's just a really spring-like display. Next, we have Nicole Capote, who is my mom's biggest fan. And I want to showcase her stuff because she did such a cute job of this image transfer. These little ducklings are just precious. And if that wasn't cute enough, take a look at these two. Nicole used Jolie's Easy Image Transfers, and I'll leave a link in the description for that as well. If you get a chance, check out Reimagine That. That's Nicole on Facebook. She does sell her stuff, and it's reasonably priced. She's out of Las Vegas, and as you can see, she does some really cute stuff. I want to show you this stool though. This was an actual bar stool and she put transfers on it and she cut it in half. Amazing. Just blew me away. Anyway, if you get a chance, check out Reimagine That. So as you can see, there are a lot of products out there that you can transfer images onto fabric and there are a lot of projects that you can do this on. All right, so I found this at the thrift store for $2.99. And I know you've seen me do this before with like a bird. But this time I found, um, I don't know, is it a hen? Is it a chicken? Uh, anyway, or is it a rooster? I'm not quite sure. But anyway, it's a candle holder. And then I actually found a candle holder. So when you put this on top, it's like these two were meant to be together. So if you ever come across a bird or a chicken, a hen, a rooster, and you find a candlestick, look at how cool that looks together. Now, I'm obviously going to paint this. I'm not going to leave it that, like this. Um, maybe some of you like it like that, but I just I want to change it up a little. But first, what we're going to do is we are going to glue these two pieces together. So I have some of this epoxy that I mixed up. It's the same epoxy that we used in... Um, the last segment so what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna take a little of this here and we're gonna put it all along the edges of our candlestick and some at the bottom of our bird and then we'll just glue those two pieces together. Make sure it's on where you want it to be because once this dries, it's gonna be on there. I think that looks good. We're gonna let that dry. Once this was dried, I took it outside and I sprayed it with flat black protective enamel. This project couldn't have been any easier, and look at it, it looks like cast iron. It's the perfect accessory to any kitchen display. Well, I hope you enjoyed this week's projects. I'll be back next week with a special Easter episode. Here's a little sneak peek of the Easter can labels that I designed. I know a lot of you have been asking for these, and I have the Easter hang tags as well. I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of those too. And if that wasn't enough, I've been working on some fruit and vegetable hang tags. I thought you could put them with your kitchen gadgets, such as like maybe an old vintage colander, maybe some antique scales, even raspberry pints. It would just be really summery and very cool. Well, that's it for this episode of Flea Market Rescue. If you like this episode and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.